What you see here is just a tiny, tiny part of a branch. It's not part of the main trunk. It's a branch or a twig that was hundreds, if not thousands of feet in diameter, okay? This is all petrified wood, okay? And you see the thin layer of vegetation that's under it. The same thing that you see there is under this road. It's under here. It's all up under here, okay? This is just cut out. So you see, this is all petrified wood, and you'll see all the splits and breaks in it. Okay, you're gonna understand that if you haven't seen it. You see these pieces here, okay? This is from a smaller tree because you can see the radius of the rings. But they go like this, the way the rings are, like a three-dimensional. They'll break down. Okay, I see here. They'll keep breaking down like this. And then they'll break apart even more. Uh, I showed you all the other ways, like the way the tree breaks down and gets all the splits. This is just another example, okay? And you see, uh, so them over there, they've been there for thousands of years. And they've had a chance to split apart and weather, but this right here is the way they also break down. So just so you kind of understand the rings, like here, you know, the pieces break off like this. And then you're left with all kinds of different shapes and sizes. And they lay in here like this and these sides you see here the rings see the rings and they'll slowly start falling off and the farther it breaks down it'll become into them little uh, squares different random pieces with with uh, the flat edges and this is what you're, what you end up with. Okay. There's all kinds of different ways these trees break down. All right. So it's actually similar to this. And then inside here, like this piece, for example, that would be a small cluster of these rings right here that in time they would split back just like you see here but that is how it breaks down okay just like this and then the longer if this piece here was longer like this, you would see this start happening and they would start splitting. And then groups of the rings start clustering and falling apart. So imagine this piece longer, okay? In there like that. And the rings start clustering like these clusters you see and they, and they break apart just like this. Hold on a minute. So like this cluster right here, well, let's see, let me break this off. So like a cluster like this would be a cluster like this right here. This is gonna be a repeat for some people, but I'll make it quick. <sighs> so if you look, so this is cedar, and one thing I want to tell you that I told you some things are recognizable and some things are not, okay? And they all don't break down the same. It don't matter where you're at in the world. But one thing I noticed that when you, whatever area uh, where you see a particular tree growing like pine or cedar or ponderosa, that is, what the petrified remains are also, okay?
so like here these are all remains of giant cedar trees and what you have around here are all uh, cedar trees trees of today's world so this is part of a cedar tree and you'll see the same characteristics with the deep grooves and but I'm going to show you what happens this is what happens to the tree okay and what you're seeing there are pieces like this okay with the flat edges and this is what you're seeing there a small piece off of something much larger so if this piece right here came off of this little branch you could imagine this piece here the size of the branch it was hundreds if not thousands of feet in diameter okay this is how you get the flat edges there's better examples but that's what we got right now we're gonna walk this up and you notice you got the flat edges and then you'll get the splits in between them or a gap So this tree's fallen, but I'll still be able to uh, show you. So you have the main tree, and this would be a branch, and this would be a twig. What you're seeing here are just tw parts of the twigs, the smallest part. These things were so large, these branches, they shadowed entire nations. I'm telling you, and when we get over there, I'll show you part of the source tree in this area. So let me pause it a minute. Hold on. Well, I'm up close right here. I want to show you. I showed you from up top that this was all connected right here. It was all one large branch. And all this has fallen away. It used to come all the way around right here and go all the way up. All this has fallen away. These are all the pieces you see buried. Okay, all these pieces here you'll understand you'll see this often so I want you to pay attention you'll see like they're all random they're all different you'll see a flat edge and then like a ledge and then another flat edge it's just the way they break apart they're all different they look the same but they're all different and these pieces like this are just pieces and parts that like fell off and they're buried you see all the pieces in the ground. Okay. And as we go along, you're going to understand the rings. Like I say, there are hundreds of thousands of different ways these trees, plants, shrubs, bushes, vegetation, and tropical break down. But they always have a flat edge and you'll understand that okay so this is what you see so my daughter peeled a piece of this off you know it's it's deceiving because it's got moss and it's discolored but when you peel a piece off it actually looks like living wood but that's what it, it originally looks like all of this okay and if you were to do the same with that okay that's not the original color okay? this was a cedar tree but it's been weathered over thousands of years and it's got moss and all these organisms living on it. It's the same thing and it's under the ground, just some of it's exposed. This piece here, remember the flat edge, okay? So I'm gonna pause it a moment, hold on. One thing I wanna show you while I'm at this angle is you see this piece right here, okay? All this in here, this all used to be one branch, okay? And all this has fallen away. This was one branch, hundreds of feet in diameter, going up. And it's just broke apart and fell away. Some of these out just to show you a good example of kind of what we're seeing here. And then you see the different ledges and uh, all the different ledges and edges 
and they just continue to break down and fall apart. There's so many different designs and different kind of pieces. They just all break down. They got the ledges. And they always got gaps between them. And then pieces like this will fall off. Everything. It's the same thing, the rolling hills everywhere. Remember I showed you that tree over there that snapped. So when you see stuff like that, that, that was broken at one time. When you have the flat edges, like all that over there. Okay, that's just the way the tree breaks down. Okay. Okay, and when, you, for the new subscribers of the new, if this is your first video, I want you to look at the size of this, okay? And when you see what I'm going to show you, how it gets the flat edges, you'll see how big this is. This is like a four-story apartment building. This is just a tiny piece compared to the branch that, or twig that it came off of. So most of these always have a flat edge, okay? This piece, this piece, and this piece, and all them running up that way were all connected at one time. All this used to be here like this. All this is falling away. All this is gone, okay? And you see here, this was snapped off. It was broken right here. Okay, and you'll see they always look like they're an end of a stump, okay? You're going to see some amazing stuff in this next five days, but now that we're farther away from this, I want you to look at this. You'll see it in today's world of modern cedar trees laying on the ground, the same today as the same after the flood. These things are enormous, and they're such tiny pieces compared to the branch or twig they came off of. And everything is buried. So I'm gonna pause it. See, so watch, hold on. So this is just part of a branch, pieces of it. This thing was so much bigger, went all the way up and around. And I have a peripheral vision that's so much greater than this little camera can show. Just remember the flat edges, how they always break apart. Okay? These are all rings right here. And these are small ones. I'll put a picture in here, some tree rings from a giant cedar that are four feet thick, okay? And if you keep that in your mind, as we keep going, you'll understand. But these, each one of these is a tree ring. And I'm telling you, 
a lot of these geologists, they're brainwashed and indoctrinated. We just see a lot of places, they'll call it sediment, and it's not. It's just layers of tree rings and all the flagstone and stuff that people have at their house. They're just pieces and parts of tree rings, okay? You look at these tree rings. Remember, they've been rounded and smoothed and filled in. And they've been... Okay. Gonna go up over here. Yeah. Each one of these is a tree ring. Okay. And them are small tree rings. Before this is done, I'll show you some tree rings that are feet thick. These trees were massive. And I want to show you something. Uh, you know what, I can get a better view uh, over here. But I'm going to show you part of the source tree that's still standing, okay? This is kind of an example how you get the flat edges, okay? And then all these pieces you see laying around with all the little flat edges. These are all the pieces like this that you see laying around. Okay? And all these pieces like this are these big monstrous parts of the tree. For those who have not watched my videos, I'm going to show you that whatever was in the tree, whether it be sap, maple, resin, whatever was in a tropical tree or a plant, that was the lifeblood of the tree, just like your blood in your body is your lifeblood. So what you're seeing here is just petrified sap, okay? That's all it is. It comes in all kinds of different browns. The cedar tree don't have the colors like uh, like you see in a lot of the petrified wood. That's from uh, something tropical or some kind of plant bush, uh, plant-based material. But you see here, this is quartz, okay? But this is petrified sap. And golden quartz always runs together, like up at uh, in South Dakota, the Black Hills Gold, okay? It always runs with the quartz. And you see the quartz, you're going to see a lot of this. I'll show you a lot of it. The quartz is the petrified sap that was in the tree. Okay, this was like one big knot on the end of this here. And you'll see this is, you'll see it in rose color, brown, and, and even like snow white. Okay, this is all petrified wood. Okay, this here doesn't have like the moss on it, the lychee or whatever it's called. Okay. So actually while I'm here, I'm going to show you something. So right here, this is part of the source tree still standing. And this thing, here let me back it out. This thing has a whole perimeter that goes around for miles. And here's another part of it that's still standing. Okay, this is part of the source tree that's still standing, that's not falling, fallen, and it's rounded and smooth. You see how everything is buried, and you even get down there to that road, everything under that road down for miles is just a buildup and a pile up. You, you go all the way across over here. You see it's the same thing, just pieces and parts of these giant trees. Everything down here, as far as the eye can see, okay? Look at this. So you see this little piece here leaning up, okay? That's just a small piece that came off. Okay, so hold on a minute. So it's just like this, but on a massive scale. Okay, it's just the way they split, and you got all the little ledges. 
That's what petrified wood does. You remember the road? This is what it was, but on a massive scale, a branch hundreds of feet in diameter. I mean, I know I repeat myself a lot, but uh, you know, this stuff here, it doesn't even look petrified, it's just incredible. You know, I've been up and close to this stuff and doing this for four years now and I'm still speechless, man. It's just incredible. Can't even imagine the implications. But uh, the world will never know about this. Just a selected few who decide to watch it. It's just incredible and I truly hope that this makes your your belief and your faith rock solid especially if you were having trouble uh, with faith but you see here this is quartz that was the sap it's just incredible and this it just doesn't look petrified that's what's so amazing about it I want you to look at this, okay? This is what the end of a stump looks like. But it's just the way the tree breaks down. This is just incredible, man. You see, you're going to see some incredible stuff today. So this is a very small example. So what you have is like I showed you back there, okay? This is just a very small part of the source tree, okay? I mean, so tiny. This source tree went all the way around. It was so huge. So similar to this, what, what I just showed you over there would be similar to what are these little pieces right here? So when you get to the presidents, the monument, what it is is just part of a stump, part of a tree that's still standing upright. And they decided, well, we're gonna go right on in here and we're gonna carve these presidents' faces, okay? And then over here to the right, to the left, you'll see where a branch came out, okay? I can't cover everything in this video because it's just so much. I have a video on Mount Rushmore if you care to watch it and it'll explain it. But you see where a branch came out here and they carved the president's faces here of a much, just a piece of a much bigger part of a tree that has fallen, okay? But when you look at this cedar, look at the characteristics of it, okay? This is a modern day cedar, okay? And even here, You'll see all the little tiny pieces, just like here, okay? Watch. So you see this piece. It's got the random flat edge right here, the ledges. You see the rings in there? Okay, you see the rings. They're only maybe a 30 second, one thirty second thick. They're tiny. You know, let's go right up here. I showed you that 
tree over there that's busted up. See, this broke off. Okay, that piece broke off and it's been sitting there and it's been petrified. It's stone, it's hard as rocks, okay? And then you get all the different random edges and flat edges. And then you get all the different rings. I'm gonna show you so many different examples of how these trees break down, okay? And here's another example how this is tall, but all this is falling away. And this is just part of this branch that follows all the way up, okay? This piece here has continued on and on and on over 4,000 years, and they get washed away, they get eroded and deteriorated. As you see here, this is a natural split, and they put the road through it, okay? So I'm gonna pause it a second. So I'm actually gonna get out here for a minute, okay? I wanna show you this. So that piece I just showed you, like, pieces like this, and pieces like this down here. Okay? All them pieces come from in here. Okay? This was all one branch. And over the thousands of years, they fall off, like this piece right here, okay? And I want to tell you, when you look at cedar today, this, this is a modern day piece of cedar, okay? Just look at the characteristics of it. The deep grooves, okay? You're gonna see the same thing there, but on a giant scale. These trees were miles and miles and miles across diameter and the branches were hundreds and thousands of feet in diameter okay and you see some of the rings here and the smaller radius here this is like the center and they get bigger as they go out and the radius gets bigger and it becomes more flat the bigger the radius gets so you see the rings like you're looking at it like this all this is missing as you see the radius here, you come on this side, this is what I say, you see the rings, okay? So now you understand what I'm saying. You could see them this way, like this would project around, and these ones would project around this way. But when you look at it from the side, you can see the rings. These are like a 16th inch thick, but on these trees, they're feet thick, okay? Before I leave here, I want to show you this, okay? You see this on a small scale, and this is not petrified, okay? And this is the source tree, this is a trunk, okay? You get up over here, this tree was miles, 10, 20 miles in diameter. And you see the same thing. If you were to look, let me uh, bring it in. If you were to look down on this, you would see the same thing like this. Just pockets of it, like this. If you were to able to look down, on these things here, you would see the same thing. But these have been so rounded and smooth, they're, so, they're up so high with the wind and the rain and the pelting snow and, and sleet. Okay, that's all you're seeing here. And it continues all the way around. And this is just a small portion. It goes all that. I'm telling you, these trees were bigger than people could even imagine, even with me showing you, okay? What you see? These are just rings that are remaining. And you can go all the way down. This tree's kind of in my way. But you see down in there, they're just all still standing. They've rounded and smooth. Okay? 
all this in here. You go way back up in here. It's just like a big broken off stump. Okay. So we're going to move on from here. So once again, this is the wood. This is the, the, the wood that turned to mica, the petrified sap. And all the gold and all the other metals were in here, in the quartz. Quartz and gold and copper, they always run together. You will not find one without the other. Showing you here, as I've showed you before, this is, I've shown hundreds of thousands, literally, examples in the last five years of my videos. But this is a petrified sap and how everything gets the flat edges. This is a piece of wood, one of them little pieces. So if you're stumbling in the dark, run your hands against the walls, find every window and every door, throw them open, throw them open, and in will flood a blinding light, and it will chase away the night. Even if you little pieces and you see it turned to crystal not like this petrified sap but if you look at this under a loop right here you'll see it's also small crystals like this this happened under different condition this is a piece of petrified wood I know it's not that color but I'm telling you it is just like this this was a little pocket of sap inside the tree and this piece right here is like a grain of sand in the whole ocean. Okay, the same thing here. These little pockets of sap. This is part of the tree. And you know how they all get the flat edges. And you come here. This is feldspar. It's part of the tree. It's not part of the flesh of an, an animal that's 50 miles long or larger. It's ridiculous. This is the petrified sap. Okay. Let's go right over here. Once again, uh, so here's the uh, the wood right here that turned to mica, the petrified sap, and a little feldspar in there, and the gold, the silver, the copper, everything runs in this. It was not deposited. Okay, you'll see right here. This is a piece of wood. This is the petrified sap. The gold, they do all the hard rock mining because all the metals and minerals are in the rock, which are the, the biblical tree remains, okay? You really need to understand that. See, this is that right there, this darker band, that's all wood. And you'll see it turn to mica. This is the petrified sap. This is just some sap with some of the uh, wood pieces integrated in it. Okay. So, I think that's about it, but I want you to understand that I'm gonna show you that this here, the gold runs in this and all the other minerals and metals, okay? showing you that this is sap for some it may be hard to believe but i'm showing you i just crushed that piece up that i had but you know it's if you were to look at this under a loop this is crystallized sap okay it's the same and i'll show you again it's crystallized it's not just a piece of rock that i took off there to make it look alike okay so this is actually soft see hold on well Shit, I just went everywhere. But anyway, this is crystallized sap. This one's a little soft. 
but it's the same thing. And if you were to look at it under a microscope or a powerful loop, you would see it's all the same. And you know, this, this subject is so large, especially getting into the periodic table, uh, with stuff like this and stuff like this. Okay, I'm showing you, I, I, it's self-evident. Okay, I'm showing you, this is all the sap. It's all the same. Someone's on the prowl Trying to take us down But we ain't giving up now A liar and a thief Coming after you and me But we ain't giving up now The harder the wind will blow Deeper our roots will go And the devil is gonna hang Oh, the devil is gonna hang Oh, the devil is gonna hang From his own cow Though the waters try to and the flames they surround Oh, we ain't giving up now Even though we may tread Through the valley of death Oh, we ain't giving up now The harder the wind will blow The deeper our roots will go
was the uh, the nine pin connectors that we used or electrodes that we used earlier. And I want to take that document the uh, amount of dust that's laying around this before we start because it's almost impossible to keep from jumping out on this table. At any rate, we'll move it down here and set this up. We should see a lot more vortex action here. Now, the gap from the bottom of the pin to the top of the, the base plate is up one and a half inches. And of course, if you double that, that would be a three inch gap overall between both electrodes. And uh, we have exactly four inches horizontally between the electrodes. So the vertical gaps will be less than the, the horizontal gap. And again, we're still using the, the very thin acrylic sheet on the base plate, and it's neutral. So here we go. Also put a layer of carbon on the bottom and a layer of ash on the top. So we actually have two layers here. move up and take a look as this is happening with this pretty incredible. See it getting into the carbon down there. I'm gonna stop it right here and take a look. Underneath. We have a whole lot more carbon on the right side and a lot more ash on the left side. Which in this orientation is uh, the right side is facing north and the left side will be facing south.
bird. Surprised, I thought this would be much more violent on the acrylic. Centrically around this uh, reaction, we begin to build ridges. We also see these uh, traced out pictures here. resistance for the flow of current which will try to then go around over the edges of the plate in my opinion. We'll also place the electrode literally right down on top of the medium. Turn it on. And if we watch around the outside edges you'll notice how the energy is coming in and, and literally in waves. 
you can actually see the current flowing over the plastic and creating the dendritic ridge patterns. Thank you.